Okay, hi and welcome to the next episode of our What's It For series. In this series we're continuing on from our last episode where we were looking at the bokeh blur and in this episode we're looking at the bokeh image node and that's found under the add input menu and input bokeh image. Now the bokeh image is a special node that works pretty much designed to work only with the bokeh blur node but obviously it's uh, an image with an alpha so you could use it as a kind of mask if you needed to for other things but specifically it's for the bokeh blur filter node so first the node itself is designed to create like a image which simulates the optical parameters of a camera such as the shape of the aperture which in this first instance is a pentagon and it also does things like lens distortions and lens shifting like um, optical shifting things lens distortions anyway <laughs> okay so the first setting is the number of flaps which relates to the um, camera's iris diaphragm so that when you take the picture the number of flaps that close to take the picture is here so I can change it up six seven eight nine and more all the way up I don't it has a limit of 24 which is pretty much a perfect circle not quite perfect but a circular shape so let's bring that down to something sensible we can go to three is the minimum we can have triangles squares and then polygonal shapes okay the angle this changes the position of the blades just gives them a slight offset that might be useful and then rounding if we pull that up it causes the rounding to bulge out until such time as you can put out to a perfect circle so the lower you have it the sharper the edges the higher the more rounded and it's the actual edge that is rounded off not the corners so much so I set that back to zero and this final value well it's not the final value this catadioptric I think is how you pronounce it, catadioptric. Catadioptric, yeah. Okay. Now that we have that figured out, what the hell does that do? I have no idea. But if I pull it out, it's supposed to um, mimic the types of distortion that you find in mirror lenses and telescopes. And is there for just visual fun, basically. Okay, uh, lens shift gives you a little bit of lens distortion, chromatic ab aberration inside your blur, which is just a, another little special effect. So let's bring this back in to our blur node. If we can find where we dumped all that lot, there they are. There's our scene. And we want to disconnect this. Let's. Uh, Unmute everything. There we go. Unmute everything. Start with, and we'll reset these to back to basics. Go zero. Stick that into image into the bucket input and let it do its compositing. There we go. Whoa, what's happening? It's gone blue. I don't think it was meant to go blue. I think we've done something stupid. Yes, we've done something stupid. We've turned something all the way down to... Ah, we've turned the lens shift right up to 1. We want that to be at 0 to start with. Now we have to wait all over again for it to work. Okay, now we can see that our bucket image... We can change these down to 1. That should make it work a bit faster we can see in little highlights some of our 
bokeh images. So if we change the flaps, you can see how they change, become six sided. Stick with five for what we're doing. We rotate the angle. And you can see the angle of the bokeh has shifted. Rounding. Again, this is just going to make them turn into circles. Like so. Which could be nice if that's what you you are wanting. We'll just set those back to zero. Have a nice sharp pentagon. Pent uh, keep wanting to say pentagrams, but of course the pentagons. Five sided shapes. Let's increase the cardiodioptrix. And that's the one that gives a little hole inside the shape. And now you can see the little dots in in everything, which is quite fun. Can make them a bit bigger. And then we can give it a little bit of lens shift. Now you can see the lens shift has uh, given that chromatic aberration to the shapes there. There's a little bit of extra artisticness. If we pull it the other way, we now see the the blue is on the inside whilst the red and yellows are on the outside. Now that's quite fun. Go up to two and then we can increase the size to two. So that will blur us out more and it will make the shapes a little bit bigger and possibly easier to see. You can see around the edges where the chromatic aberration is showing up. So that's a quick way of doing that. Let's add in our image again. Unmute that and put the vehicle back in. And there we go. There's our image. We have a nice focus image and we have our background blurred and artistically uh, manipulated with chromatic aberrations and we could probably uh, add a little chromatic aberration on the main image as well but we're not going to because we haven't got to that particular node yet. So that's all fun and that's the Bucky image and the Bucky blur and I'm sure you can come up with lots of other things you can do with that. I Obviously you can use a render layer as your input image and have uh, your 3D scene as a background depending on what you, what you want to do. So there, I think that's it for that set of videos and in our next video we will be moving on to our textures. I think we are using the texture clip next time. Okay, and that's it for now, so I will see you next time. Talk to you again soon and bye for now.